Hey guys, Walt Brown here, and I'm uh, tackling some subjects, really try to teach some facilitations that you can use as an implementer or a self-implementer of EOS that I see a lot of people struggling with, a lot of clients. So I'm making this specific video for my T group. These are some of my peers in the EOS worldwide. And it's all about the accountability chart and creating super clear role clarity, because we all know at the end of the day, the accountability chart rolls on rolls, seats roll on rolls. That's sort of the joke I have. But it's all about roles. And so I'm gonna share a facilitation with you. It's a method that I call the flower power. And it's how you get to a full inventory. And it's really more focused on a full inventory of your people that are out in the field or closer to the front lines that are doing the work. So a little bit of context. I'm the third EOS implementer from back in 2007, 2008. Been doing it for over 15 years. Coming up on 1,400 session days. And I've actually taken close to 200 clients through this, so it's discovered in real world stuff. So just a little bit of background and rolling through it. So it's called the flower power, and the goal is to do this accountability chart work with and for your people and not to them. We're including our frontline workers in this. A little bit of setup, a reminder. The accountability chart, yes, it has seats, but then each one of the seats have these things called roles and it's really important for us to get an inventory of our roles so this is what happens is seat role from each role people are going to be following standard operating procedures and these standard operating procedures tie into our core processes so kind of like the first little takeaway you might want to see or the aha here is if you know your roles you can identify your standard operating procedures, your work instructions, your checklist, your policies, et cetera, and then ask from that standard operating procedure, is there an interdependency with another role? And when you know there's an interdependency, then you know you have a pathway to your core processes. The other thing we do is from our roles, we're able to get to numbers that when the person understands the purpose of their role, then we can have a conversation with them and say, what do you think we need to be tracking on a weekly basis? What numbers would you like to report that are the activity that are ultimately going to fulfill the purpose of the role? And we can capture those on our scorecards. So this is just a, uh, a way to get these tools filled out faster via role clarity. So I'm not talking about like the roles at the top level I'm really talking about the roles that are out here of our doers and our subject matter experts. How do we get clarity around what these people are doing? Up here, they got LMA, et cetera, maybe role control. There's an LMA here. So when you're thinking about this method, you can use it up here, but I really want you to be thinking further out in the organization where you might have four or five people all doing the exact same job, filling the same seat with the same roles. So this area right here. Got it? So it's called the flower power, and you're gonna understand why it's called the flower power in just a second. What we do is think about your organization at that level more toward the front lines and gather like five people or four of your techs together. Their manager can be involved in it also. And you're gonna have five people around. They all might be doing a tech level one would be the name of their seat and you ga gather these people together we've got Tommy we've got Sue we got Billy we got B Ryan and then you might have their manager in the room and all these people are doing this filling the same seat and they basically are, are performing the same roles every day and what we do is we have these people together put them in a room and we just choose one of them for this sense let's just put Billy in the middle and we ask this question. We say, okay, everybody take a piece of paper out and just about take two quiet minutes. And I want you to focus on Billy. Billy here in the center. And I want, to ask, I want you to ask yourself when you look at Billy, what is Billy thinking about and doing or what should Billy be thinking about and doing in order to fulfill the purpose of his seat? And, you, and you're saying, what is he doing or thinking about and what he should be doing or thinking about every second every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every month, every year, etc. So just to like trying to get them to kind of lift up above and look down on what's going on. 
and you give them like two to two and a half minutes. And in two to two and a half minutes, these people here, want, these five people are gonna have a list of 10 to 12 items written on their list. So you're with me with the setup there, you say, okay, time's up, stop. And then what you do is you go to Billy. You say, hey Billy, what you got? And Billy's gonna tell you, and this is one time, you, you facilitate it one person at a time, going around the room, giving you one idea. And Billy's gonna give you an idea and you're gonna write it on the board. And then you're gonna drop down to Brian and you can say, Brian, what do you have? And he'll give you something. You say, is that the same as here or is it over here? It's normally another area. You jump in here and you go to the manager, what do you have? And the manager might put something in here. Go back to Tommy, Tommy gives you something new. You go to Sue, back to Billy. And ultimately you go around until everybody's list is exhausted. And what you're gonna find on the board are these groupings of words. Everybody with me so far? Anybody got any more? Put it down there, great. Once you get these groupings, then you say, okay, I'm gonna pretend that I am Bob Ross, you know, the guy that draws beautiful little paintings, I'm gonna draw a little, little tree here. And you say, and I'm gonna draw a beautiful little flower. I'm gonna make Billy into a lovely little flower. And you go, you're basically circling these word groups. And you come back and you number them, one, two, three, four, five, six. Billy has six rolls. This is how we get to the inventory of everything that's going on. Once you get to these rolls like this, the next step, that's phase one, is do the facilitation of every second, every minute, every hour, do the grouping, and then build the flower. And the next step in terms of driving this to the ground, even with these exact same people, it's great when you have an even number. You take these numbers and you write down the center and you say funny here and serious here. And what you ask the group to do is you break them up into halves and you have them go down, understand what all these words look like, what they form up into, and then they are going to name the role. And they name it as a funny name and they name it as a serious name. Two groups, they go out and whatever they do, a lot of times you'll see them picking up like movies or whatever. And what this, this exercise right here does is helps them lift up above the whole mess and think in a, in a positive, funny attitude and they become more creative. It also makes them understand more what the role really is. They name it Funny Serious and then you get both groups back and there's, you basically have them write on the board what their ideas are and you do a bake off each one, and then they're laughing like crazy. They'll be keeping score, but they're basically gonna get on the same page with what they want to call the name of the role. That's how you get to full role, role inventory. And there's some steps after it. I just wanna get your head around this. And the cool thing to remember is this is out to the front lines mostly. You go out and you sweep to the center. You get all of these roles, and once they understand what the roles are, they can go to the SOP, Standard Operating Procedures, what are the processing procedures you're following inside of here? And then is there a handoff that maps to a core process? We need to name that core process and, and document the workflow. And it also jumps out here and gives us a number that they can track on a weekly basis that then also is going to be possibly picked up on their weekly scorecard that they're reporting in their level 10. Deep stuff I know, but if you get your client to do this work off the bat or you do it this yourself, you're gonna create amazing organizational cognizance, amazing clarity around what everybody's job is. When you sit down in your quarterly conversation, you're asking them, do you get, won't have the capacity to do all of your roles? This is where you go to. It'll make your life a ton easier. Hope this helps.